Hi everyone, this book documents cases of British military ineptitude over 100 years from 1850 to 1950 covering the Crimean War, through the Boer conflict, to the disastrous campaigns of the First World War and the calamities of the Second. It looks at case histories, it touches upon social psychology and psychopathology and it draws on ethological, psychoanalytic and behaviorist approaches. The book was published in 1976, but honestly, work of this caliber doesn't really have any expiry date. Its author is Norman Dixon. He was a psychologist who had served in the British Army during the Second World War. I was very lucky to have just finished reviewing the masterpiece on Ivan Pavlov by Daniel Toads, and then immediately stumble upon this other great book in what is known as a folio book library, because these are uh, illustrated books. Uh, and I loved how these books feel to my hand. Now, the book is divided into three parts. The first part gives those of us unfamiliar with wars, anecdotes of military incompetence, particularly highlighting errors of generalship or leadership. That makes this book relevant to anyone working in any hierarchical organization with any sort of leadership. We warned that the author is British and knowing that they were colonizers might make those of us who come from colonized nations to feel slightly upset. But remember, this book is an analysis of incompetence, a reconstruction of what happened and how loss of life might have been avoided. And this applies to all sides in a war and is especially important for peacekeeping. The second part of the book is a Freudian analysis of the psychological traits of leaders and commanders who were especially responsible for costly blundering. It attributes errors of generalship that are costly to uh, the military having a sort of propensity for attra attracting a minority of people who can be a menace at high levels of command. The nature itself of military accentuating the traits uh, in these people, which can prove greatly disastrous. The undemocratic nature of armies and navies, and we've seen so many movies about this. The decision payoffs in the military costing thousands of lives and misery to civilians and soldiers. And hypercritical stances in the military where people defend senior commanders at the faintest breath of criticism. This list goes on. There's a particular emphasis on prejudice, ignorance, uh, fear of failure, overconformity, authoritarianism, and sheer stupidity in this book. I, of course, understand that the Freudian examples given by the author don't hold true today, so discount these. If he were to rewrite the book today, it would certainly have been with better psychological theories and scientific theories backing it up, because the writing itself is fantastic. The third part of the book gives detailed examples of good generals who possess the opposite traits of the incompetent ones and of course a few good or successful generals who are successful despite possessing most undesirable traits. If you especially love peace or are in the army or are a psychologist, this book falls in my top 10 books of all time right alongside Pavlov's biography. An absolutely must read.